Okay, this is a new uh, little feature. I'm going to talk you through a code analysis section in Chapter 1 where we have a look at the JavaScript console and talking to it. Now, this is really quite interesting, as if the rest of the book hasn't been, because it shows you the guts of what JavaScript does and how it fits inside the browser. Um, I quite like this because it shows you what the... If, you, if I buy a car, I like having a look at the engine. I'm not sure what all the bits do, but I wanted to, I'm, I'm a fairly good on, so I open the button and have a look. Um, this is kind of doing that, but with a website and a browser. Let's open up Visual, let's open up Microsoft Edge. Here we go. My browser of choice. Uh, and now I can go to a website, uh, begin to code. Ah, oh, there we go. It's already in my history. Wonderful. So I hit that. You can go there too, uh, and this is the uh, page we used in Chapter 1 to have a look at what happens um, behind the scenes and how this little function in our browser works. I can see all that by pressing the magic key F12. Boom! There it is. Um, it gives me an error. Uh, it says, I couldn't load your fav icon. Uh, what's that? Well, some websites have a little picture which appears on the browser bar when they're open. Um, mine doesn't, uh, and the browser doesn't like this. Now, it's a nice example of how, as a user of the page, you would never see that. But if you look under the bonnet, you start to see these errors. If I move on to Elements, which is the other view of um, the program of view, then I can see here that I've got um, my web page. There's my text. And, I, and as I move my cursor over, it moves to various different parts of it, which is cute. If I expand this, you can see the hidden program, which is called Do Addition. And it's given two numbers, number one number, number two number, makes a result by adding them together, then puts them into an alert and displays them. I can prove it works, as if you were doubting me, by going do addition. Uh, addition. Now, it remembers I've done this before, so it's trying to help by giving me the chance to retype it, so I will do that. Now, this is like having one of these really faithful dogs that always brings the ball back before you've thrown it kind of stuff. Um, and it can be really useful, and it can be really annoying. Um, if you go into settings, there's a little piece of extra bonus information, go to here, then you can say, turn off eager evaluation. That means tell the dog, no, don't do that. <laughs> Just sit and wait for a minute. Um, if you turn that off, you won't get all this fast whiz-bang stuff. So if you want to do that, that's fine. I'll leave it on because I'm lazy. Uh, so I'll hide the settings. There we go. And now I will show you what we do in the book, which is which is we actually try and compute the value of 2 plus 3. And Mr. Eager goes, yeah, it's 5, and out comes 5. We know that. 2 plus 3 is 5, and, and hopefully uh, it'll continue to be so for a while. So now I'm using plus to add numbers together. But what happens if I, and it's good old Eager, Mr. Eager, uh, what if I try and add Rob and Miles together like that because I'm an egotist? Uh, boom, out it comes. Interesting thing to note here, I put a space in front of the Miles because I want to, if I go uh, Rob plus Miles, I get Rob Miles, one word, because there's no space in there. It's not smart enough to go, hey, he wants these things spacing out. It'll put the space in only if you give it the space to put in. So, we work okay, with that. Let's try some more. Let's do 6 minus 5. Boom! And that comes out as 1. Love it. So, let's keep on going. We, we're getting... The JavaScript console is basically taking a statement that you type and obeying it as if it was a Java program running. So, we're quite... Okay, with this, 6 minus 5 is 1. Love it. Um, this is where it gets a bit hairy. Now I'll do something which will really upset it. I'm going to go, I'm going to plus work between words. What does plus do when I try and say Rob minus Miles? Now that's kind of meaningless. Adding two numbers together, fine. Uh, subtracting two numbers, one from the other, fine. Taking a string from another string, stupid. And JavaScript doesn't give me an error. It just goes nan. Nan. Um, that is JavaScript's way of saying this is not a number. That's correct. But it actually has a broader meaning than that. It means <laughs> this is a stupid thing I've been asked to do, and therefore I'm going to give you back an answer, which means you've just done something stupid. Now, things to bear in mind are that other languages, if you do this kind of thing, will either refuse to build in the first place so you can't ever run them, that's what C-sharp would do, or they might give you an error at runtime that says, you have taken a string from a number, that's, sorry, a string from a string, that's silly, and fall over, 
JavaScript doesn't do any of that. JavaScript goes, you've given me a duff answer. So if I use that in a program, the program will keep going, but oh boy, it would do something stupid. There's an important philosophical point at work here, he said very carefully, and that's that JavaScript has the kind of Pony Express approach to program execution, which is that the program must always do something. They must always get through. So JavaScript programs don't tend to fail in, in ways that um, necessarily will, will, will uh, appear like other languages do. Um, they'll keep going. Now that's a kind of good thing because it means your web page will always load and do something. But it's kind of a bad thing because it means that it might do the thing that you didn't expect. So be aware of that. We'll cover it in great detail a bit later on. But while we're doing stupid things, let's divide one by zero because that's the first thing I always do. And Mr. Eager's going, you're going to get infinity. And indeed you do. Another example of JavaScript, sort of keeping things going by storing up trouble for the future. In, the, in other programming languages, if I divide one by zero, my program will probably stop. In the case of JavaScript, that won't happen. You just get a, this, this infinity thing. Now, the nice thing is you can check for that. So your program could say, if this calculation is infinity, I will put a message up that says, Mm, you didn't mean to do that, did you? Um, and then deal with it in a more sensible, managed way. Uh, so, yeah, um, this is a good thing and a bad thing, more of it. But the, it's interesting that I, I quite like the fact that the, uh, the JavaScript language has an understanding of the concept of infinity built in. If I go minus 1 divided by naught, it gives me minus infinity, which is also quite funky. Um, if, you ha if you're coming from other languages, this might look a bit weird. <laughs> in that case, stick around, it gets weirder. But for now, do bear in mind that if you do daft things, you will get daft numbers coming back, but your program might not produce an error. It might not say, I'm unhappy. It might just give you garbage back. Um, when I was in the program, we were told that garbage in equals garbage out. In other words, you put daft things into the computer and you get daft things back. That's fine and what you would expect. And this is just a ramification of that. Let's do one more sum um, because I find this intriguing as well. I'm going to go 2 divided by 10, which is 0.2, and I'm going to add it to 1 divided by 10, which is 0.1. Now, the answer to this should be 0.3, but it's not. It's 0.3 followed by a ton of zeros, 4. It's a tiny bit wrong. Now, this is the thing worth bearing in mind but not fretting about. I worked out that if you measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon in millimeters, then, <laughs> which you can do, take a while, need a very long tape measure, but if you did that, then if you were out by two or three millimeters, that's kind of what this number means here. And maybe it's even maybe smaller than that. So the thing is that it's wrong, but it's it's not very wrong. It's, a, it's an unbelievably small amount wrong. No one does sums to that precision, really. Uh, except perhaps JavaScript. The, the difficulty comes if you say, is this number 3? Because the computer will go, ah, no, it's not 3. It's 3 point, a whole bunch of zeros, 4. Uh, and so you do have issues to worry about sometimes. But the reason I'm putting it up there is because I think that it's kind of interesting that computers, um, you might think they store everything exactly, but they don't. What they do is they, they store an approximation, something close enough, even for a number that we can write on a piece of paper with a pen as 1 over 10 or whatever, um, we can actually get to the point where we can write numbers down <laughs> in two two digits, which the computer can't store accurately. It's because of binary and whatnot, but we haven't got time for that. Just keep that in mind, but don't worry about it. One more thing to do. Let's do some more things here. Alert. Alerts are fun. This is how our program tells, um, tells us the result damper. Danger, colon, will, will. It says this in the book, so I'm hoping it isn't copyright. Here we go. Bang, up comes an alert. Now, things to note, we saw this when we did the numbers edition, that's fine. Things to note, it's got this heading at the top that says, this website is saying that. That's to make it harder for a naughty script writing person to spoof a message from Windows or when another desktop or something or another app. This is my website saying things. And so the browsers nowadays, they tell you who's saying this. And the message comes out as that. So if you want to make an alert, it's easy to do. Um, why is it saying undefined? Because the alert function does something for us but doesn't return a number. 
So it's saying, I'm just going to do this. Um, some functions you call and they'll say, yeah, I worked or no, I didn't by returning a value. More of that in later chapters. But the final thing I want to try, which is kind of mind blowing. I love this. I type print. I hit that and I go boom and watch what happens. Up comes the print dialog. Now, if you have ever hit print on a web page and have that pop up so you can print it and wondered how it works, I know I have, then this is how it works. You hit that. The JavaScript program contains a command called print and that goes off into the browser and runs quite a big program that displays this lovely box with a preview and a print button and a cancel button and whatnot. We can do this kind of thing and by golly we will be doing. Uh, I can cancel that because don't we want to print just now. But that's kind of that's kind of what the the, the, the stuff does, uh, and that sounds like a a, a, a a sort of yeah a, a narrated code exploring session. Uh, and we'll be doing more of these as we go through the book. I hope you find it useful uh, and stick with it. It gets even more interesting. Thank you.